Did you know in Monaco, the second smallest country in the world, that is famous for its casino, the Grand Casino di Monte Carlo, that you've probably seen in a James Bond movie or two. The name's Bond. James Bond. It is actually illegal for citizens of that country to gamble. You need a passport to enter the casino because it is strictly for tourists. Hello fellow travelers, my name is Daryl Dickens and this is the Learning to Travel show for Thursday, May 19th, 2016. Let's take a look at some news in the travel world. First up is the updated travel advisory that the State Department gave for North Korea. Uh, that travel advisory states that they strongly urge U.S. citizens to avoid all travel to North Korea due to the serious risk of arrest and long-term detention under North Korea's system of law enforcement, which imposes unduly harsh sentences including for actions that in the United States would not be considered crimes. So basically you can get in trouble for things you wouldn't think are illegal, and they go on to list some of those things, and here are some of the more interesting ones. Traveling without authorization even for a short distance. That makes it sound like you want to take a walk around the block that gets you in trouble. Having unauthorized interaction with local population. So you can't even interact with locals uh, safely. You never know when that could get you in trouble. Taking unauthorized photographs, which I know they're not the only country that you can get in trouble for that. It's just one of those things that they can use. It's like getting a speeding ticket in a small town, I think. They just know they can trap you by, because most likely, as a tourist, you're going to be taking photographs. Shopping at stores not designated for foreigners. That's an interesting one. I don't know if they put like a sign on the window, or if they get a lot of foreigners, how you would know. Basically, I think they're just looking for ways to lock up United States citizens. So if you have plans to travel to North Korea this summer, you might want to look into them and maybe consider a different location. All right, up next we got the uh, Memorial Day holiday is coming up here in the United States. Uh, here is basically the unofficial start of summer and the American Automobile Association, or AAA as we usually call it, is predicting that more than 38 million Americans will be taking road trips that weekend. This could be a record-setting um, year for that. Uh, they predict it could be the second largest year, most likely due to the low gas prices. Gas here is at a 10-year low, so that's going to get a lot of people in their cars and out traveling. Um, are you one of those people? Uh, let me know in the comments what your plans are or if you stay home to avoid the crowds. Okay, now for today's travel Q&A. Is it okay to eat street food? This is actually a common discussion among travelers, uh, especially new travelers. Wherever you go in the world, for the most part, you're going to find vendors along the road or in the sidewalks or wherever you go that are selling food out of carts or little tables they've set up. And there's a great debate and different attitudes on if you should eat the street food. And I sort of see, think of it this way, anywhere you eat out, uh, no matter how nice the restaurant is, you're in danger of getting sick from it. You can't see the food being prepared. You don't know what's going on back there. You don't know the given um, standards they have. Granted, in some countries like the United States, you're kind of counting on the health department to keep them in check, but that's not always true. So when it comes to street food, I think it's okay to try it. Um, in general, when we travel, we avoid um, anything raw. Even like, uh, a lot of people assume like raw plants are fine, or plants in general are fine, like lettuce and strawberries and those sorts, but that's exactly what you need to avoid. Um, because they might have been washed in unclean water is your biggest issue, unpotable water. So you'll get whatever's in that water on the food. So you're much safer in street food with um, things like fried food or grilled, things that you know have really been cooked. And the other thing to do is just sort of, if you're curious about a specific stall, watch it for a little bit if you can, hang out around it and see how other people are, like see if it's busy basically. Especially with locals, if you're somewhere where these food stands are primarily for locals, base it on the busy ones, because people around are going to know what's good. But for the most part, food, street food is a big part of travel, and it, the adventure of eating it is a big part of travel and trying new things. And it's also usually very cheap, so it's a good budget way. So I do think that for the most part it is safe. Um, like I said, whenever you eat out, there's a chance you could get sick. I know from us, um, usually the only times, the only times, actually the only times that we've ever been sick is from restaurants. 
Uh, one of the sickest we got was at Walt Disney World of all places. So you just never know unless you make the food yourself uh, how safe it is. So just stick to food that you know has been thoroughly cooked. Uh, one great thing about street food is you can actually watch them cook it. You're basically standing in their kitchen. So you can sort of judge for yourself how clean it looks and how well cooked it looks. looks. And it doesn't hurt to um, check into things like TripAdvisor or those kinds of sites for wherever you're at. Because chances are people will kind of give input onto what vendors are good and what experiences they've had with them. But get out there, try street food. Don't be afraid. And finally, I have today's travel feature, which is the Caledonian Sleeper Train out of London, which operates service from London to major cities in Scotland. Lonely Planet said this about them. The Caledonian Sleeper isn't a train ride, it's an escape. An overnight teleport from the hubbub to the highlands. We actually, when we were took our epic vacation, we went from London to Scotland, but unfortunately we took a bus from London to Edinburgh, which wasn't the most pleasant thing. And then eventually we picked up a train from Edinburgh up to Iverness. It would have been much nicer if we could have taken this train. I didn't even know this train existed, which is why I'm highlighting it today. So if you find yourself in London and you're on your way to Scotland, I would definitely look into the Caledonian sleeper train. It looks very nice. And I'll end today uh, with a travel quote. We travel not to escape life, but for life not to escape us. Anonymous. So says the internet. So until next time, happy trails.